up. Okay. So, um, hi. So, as Christina said, uh, my name is Marielle. Um, I'm currently in New Jersey, uh, but I live in Prague. Uh, normally. And I, as Christina said, used to be an English teaching assistant with the Fulbright program in Znoimo. Um, I still go to Znoimo very often. And so uh, I, you know, love to travel around the Czech Republic. Um, I'd be curious to know where you guys are all from. So if you want to put your, uh, where you're from in the chat, also, feel free to ask questions in the chat anytime, or uh, if you don't understand a specific term, um, please feel free to ask in the chat and I'll make sure to clarify anything for you. Um, so today I'm here to talk about the US education system. Um, as Christina said, uh, I work at the Education USA Advising Center at the Fulbright Commission. Um, I work with there with my colleague, Clara, who's in the picture. Um, and our job is to help all students in the Czech Republic who are interested in studying in the US. So if that's something you are interested in at all, um, please feel free to contact us and we'd be happy to help you. Um, here, I show you how we are actually part of a larger network of um, American centers or opportunities for you to connect with the US um, from here in the Czech Republic. So definitely feel free to take a screenshot or um, you can reference the presentation after on YouTube or on Facebook Live. Um, and you can find out here, uh, you know, whether it's for improving your English, um, learning you know, more about the US for studies or for work and travel, um, which uh, office here in the Czech Republic might be the best fit for you. Um, and also you can always contact our office and we'd be happy to connect you uh, with our colleagues who work in these other organizations. Um, so today my topic is US education system. So I'll go quickly through um, sort of basics around uh, the lower levels of education and then into university education. Um, and then also some of the differences between studying in the Czech Republic and studying in the US. Um, we'll also do some quizzes. So when I get to those, I will uh, give you some instructions for how you can participate. Um, and it's just for fun. So don't worry, no grades here. Um, so first I'll start with the lower levels of education in the US, which you might hear this term K through 12. So uh, K is for kindergarten, and in our uh, education system, the grade levels go up to 12, which is when we uh, finish our secondary school. So here I have sort of the basic levels, um, including the ages and then what the grades are called. Um, so, I mean, when children are really, really little, uh, they might even go to daycare, which is uh, from ages one to three. I remember when I was an English teaching assistant, the first question students asked me in Znoimo was, is it true that all American children have nannies? And <laughs> the truth is that no, uh, not all American children have nannies, but it might seem that way um, in TV shows or things you hear, uh, because um, unfortunately in the US we don't have uh, such great maternity leave time, like in the Czech Republic, where it can even be up to three years. Uh, but in the U.S., sometimes uh, new mothers only have three months of maternity leave. So uh, with their children, they might put them in a daycare center um, at this young age if they don't have family nearby. Um, so after daycare, older students who are three to four might go to nursery school. Um, and daycares and nursery schools are usually private um, types of schools for children. Uh, there aren't as many public government funded daycare and nursery school, unfortunately. Um, then when students are four, uh, they enter a grade which is called pre-kindergarten or pre-K. And this might even be uh, offered by the public school system in a town. 
Um, then we get into the like, again, standard levels of education uh, in the US. Um, I've broken it down here into kind of the most general form, um, but actually in the US, we don't really have um, as much national standardization. Um, we have a Department of Education, similar to the Ministry of Education um, at the national level, but this is more giving uh, basic standards of education and also oversees some higher education. But a lot of the uh, curriculum and the uh, materials that are used actually come from the state level in the US. Um, and then going down to these uh, specific you know, grade levels, um, this can be even determined by what town you live in. So um, you might actually hear of different uh, amount of years that a student would be in an elementary school or a middle school, depending on what town they live in. Um, but these are kind of the basic ones that I put here on this uh, table or in this table. So uh, kindergarten students start when they're five years old and kindergarten is abbreviated as K. Um, then students go to elementary school uh, this is usually ages six to 11 uh, and grades one to five. Then middle school, which would be ages 11 to 14 and grades six to eight. And then finally high school, um, which would be 14 to 18 years old and grades nine through 12. So this is like a first big difference between uh, US and Czech Republic in that um, we usually finish school when we're 18, which is younger than in most Czech schools. And our grade ends at 12, whereas in Czech Republic, there are actually 13 grade levels technically. So um, American students, when we go to university are typically a year younger than a Czech student who's going to university. Um, one other thing I'll just mention with the uh, basics of our school system is the difference between public schools and private schools. Um, both these schools can have equally high reputations. Private schools sometimes uh, even have a higher reputation in the US because they have more resources and are smaller. Um, public schools are based on where you live. So where you pay taxes to, uh, then the student is able to go to the school district uh, um, or the public school in that tax area. So for example, I grew up in the town of Glen Ridge. My parents paid taxes to the Glen Ridge Township and then I could go to the public school in Glen Ridge. So um, I'll give you some more examples from my uh, education as we go. Um, so a little bit about school culture in the US, uh, some things you might see in movies that are actually true. Um, so here I have a picture from Forrest Gump of them on the school bus. Uh, so a lot of school districts in the US are super big because uh, our country is really big, um, even especially in rural areas, uh, there are big distances between schools and uh, the town and where students live. So school buses are a way to get students from their homes to school. Uh, so depending on where you live, a school bus might be a part of um, your you know, morning and afternoon uh, ride. For me, my town was very small, so we did not have school buses, um, but I did take them when I went to camp sometimes and my camp was uh, farther away from where the school was. Um, this picture is of a pep rally of uh, some sports and school spirit. Um, so in the US, uh, sports are a really big part of um, American life in general, but also school culture. Um, usually sports are played in connection to your school. So you are representing your school when you play the sport. Um, and after school, you usually practice every day. So it's, you know, building on your school experience. Uh, often the facilities for practicing are connected to the school. Um, so it's, you know, kind of an extension of your classes. 
Um, here is a picture of lunch. Um, so in the US, uh, lunch is in the middle of the day and usually we can't leave the school building for uh, lunch actually. So um, schools usually have the cafeteria actually connected to the school building. Um, our lunches are usually the smaller meal of the day and cold. So uh, students can bring their lunch or um, they can get the lunch from the cafeteria itself. Um, and then lastly is uh, sort of a common image you might see of school lockers. So um, in the US, we don't change our shoes uh, to slippers every day, but we do use our lockers for storing our books, um, for keeping our jackets, and then also for decorating. Um, I remember at my school, we would always decorate our friend's locker for their birthday. Um, we would have our decorations on the inside of the locker, like you see the character um, in the picture. So uh, all of these things are actually true um, from what you see in the movies. And actually all of these pictures are from movies. So um, in the handout, I tell you what they are. And I also give you, uh, you know, some examples of how you can see this school culture in movies, if that's fun for you. Um, so a little bit about the structure of high school. Um, so these are from my school, actually. So you can see an example. Um, so school in the US usually goes from 8 a.m. to about 3 p.m. Um, and students, as I said, you have to stay inside the school building um, throughout the whole day. So that was something unusual for me when I first came to the Czech Republic that um, students you know, could go outside sometimes uh, with for lunch, you would walk to different places around town or to the Yidelna. So uh, for us, we have to stay inside the whole building. I mean, inside the building all day. Um, and teachers as well stay at school the whole day from eight to three, even if they don't have classes all day. Um, and we actually had this period nine where you could go to ask teachers for help. So the teachers would be in their classrooms and this was you know, 25 minutes after, at the end of the day where we could uh, find our teachers and ask them for help if we needed it. Um, also here is the system of grades um, at most American schools. Again, this one is from my school. Um, so our grades go from A to F. Um, similar one to five, uh, but A to F with A being the best and F being the worst. Um, at my school, we also had pluses and minuses. So you could have a B plus or a B minus. Um, and these are equal to certain number equivalents. Um, also, these are equal to these uh, decimal points. So zero to 4.25. Um, and this is something used to calculate a GPA or a grade point average. So um, all American students, when they finish their school, uh, their grades are averaged into this score of zero to four about. And um, that's a way to compare students across different schools. And that's something uh, you might learn more about if you did choose to apply to the US since that's something that the universities are asking about. Um, thanks, Christina, um, in the chat. So um, that's a quick bit about uh, K to 12 education. Um, and now we're going to do our little quiz to check. So um, this is for fun. Not all of the information I completely covered, but it's something for us to learn as we're doing the quiz together. So um, I will share the screen. So the way the quiz works is it's called Kahoot. I don't know if you've done a Kahoot before, um, but if you go to this address, either on your computer or your phone, so www.kahoot.it, then you can put in this pin number here. Um, it will ask you for a nickname. Um, so you can choose either your first name, something else, please keep it appropriate. Um, 
And then as soon as I see us there, um, I'll start. Great, I see some already. Cool. This is the um, way that it's uh, created for you. So cool, uh, that keeps it e easier. Um, so once we start, you'll see the questions here in the Zoom shared screen, but on your phone or your computer, you'll see the boxes that you can choose the answers. Um, they will be different shapes. And then we'll go through some of the answers together. So don't worry if you don't know them, we're gonna learn as we go. Okay, so great. I see a bunch of people there already. I'll wait another minute or two. And feel free if you're having trouble uh, to write in the chat, but it looks like everybody is very proficient. I like some of these names, they're funny. All right, so let's, I still see people jumping in, so I don't want to cut anyone off from participating. All right, looks like that's it. So we're going to move forward. So this is our basic US education quiz. So US high school consists of how many grades? Awesome. Okay, so four was the correct answer. So it's grades nine, 10, 11, and 12. So those are the four years of American high school. All right, we're gonna see our leaderboard as we go. I think it's according to correct answer and time. At what age do American children enter kindergarten? one could be a little tricky. Okay. All right, so the answer is actually five to six. So uh, you have to be at least five years old to enter kindergarten and some students actually enter when they're six. All right. What are American second year high school and university students called? So I actually didn't go over this one. So it's gonna be a, a true quiz of maybe if you've heard this from um, movies before. Great, so a lot of people got it right, sophomore. So uh, students in secondary school and in university, first years are called freshmen, second years are sophomores, third years are juniors, and then fourth years are seniors. All right, we had a change in the scoreboard. We have Sturdy Lion coming up. Okay, in most US states, what age is education compulsory until? So we have 14 to 16 and 16 to 18. Again, another tricky one. All right, so it's 16 to 18. So more people got it right, cool. Um, so this actually depends on the state, as I said. Um, so the states decide at what age uh, students have to stay in school or until what age students have to stay in school. Um, so in most or in all states, it's 16, but then some states even have a later uh, age. So it can be up to 18, which would be, again, the end of secondary school. Oh, we now have winged sloth coming up. 
Usually how old are Americans when they graduate from high school? Okay, 17 to 18, great. So we had, almost everyone got it right. Awesome. So yeah, 17 to 18, it's when most Americans graduate high school. Okay, we have a true or false. True or false, US schools have a prescribed national curriculum. Okay, so it's false. Uh, so remember at the national level, um, we don't have a national curriculum. The curriculums are decided by the states. All right, Space Buffalo coming to the top. What school systems use letter grading? So now we have some uh, influence from the UK here to see your knowledge of another education system, which you might have learned about in your English class. All right, US and UK is right. So we both use letter grading in our school systems. Oh, Sturdy Lion is making a comeback with three in a row. <laughs> I like these names. Okay, how many grades make up American intermediate or middle school? So that's the one under high school. And again, this is uh, like average for uh, most school districts. Okay, so the correct answer is three. So again, that's uh, grade six, seven, and eight before a student goes to high school for nine, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, we still have winged sloth at the top. Another true or false, there is a national school leaving exam in the USA. So is there something similar to your maturita in the US? true or false. All right, so it's actually false. So uh, similar to that, the curriculum is uh, decided by the state. We also have standardized exams, but these are by the state as well. So there is no national school leaving exam in the USA, um, only state exams. All right, winged sloth is still at the top. And the last question, in which country are uniforms commonly worn in public schools? So this is a kind of wild card question. We didn't discuss this one yet. And again, we have the US versus the UK. All right, UK, so uh, a lot of people got this one right. So in the US, um, again, public schools are uh, you know, by the government. So um, I don't believe it's actually uh, very common except for something called charter schools that uh, uniforms would be required. If anything in the US, uh, uniforms would be required by private schools. Um, again, these are uh, students have to pay tuition, um, these are uh, run, usually they're nonprofit schools. Um, and these ones in the US, these private schools would have uniforms. All right, so we have our quiz um, and we have Sturdy Lion got seven out of 10. Great, Honest Gator. And our number one is Winged Sloth. So. Um, to whoever you are, great job, um, and thank you, everybody.
who was participating in the quiz will actually do another one. So you can have a chance to show off your knowledge. Okay, so we'll move on now to uh, US universities. Um, so uh, why might you choose to study in the USA? And I'll focus on the things uh, why studying in the USA is different than studying here in the Czech Republic. Um, so in the US, you actually choose your major or your field of specialization in your second year of your studies. Um, so when we apply to university, we don't have to choose what we actually want to study. Um, that was something when I first came to the Czech Republic that was so different for me that uh, when students finish their secondary school, they have to choose what they want to do maybe for the rest of their life. Whereas in the US, we have more time when we're at university um, to study general subjects, kind of like gymnasium, and then uh, we can choose in our second year what we want to major in or have our specialization. Um, we have test optional admissions. So we don't have a maturita exam, as I said, um, and we don't have a college entrance exam either. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the exams we do have. Um, there are some standardized university exams, but these actually are becoming even less important, especially with coronavirus. So um, if you aren't so confident with taking tests, that's completely fine in the US. Um, now it's actually possible to apply to most universities without taking um, any sort of like knowledge-based exam. Um, and I'll talk about what universities actually look at for uh, deciding whether to accept a student later, since that's probably your next question. Um, you can study multiple subjects at the same university. So as I said, uh, you don't choose your major when you apply to a university. Um, so that means that most universities offer um, lots of different majors and you can actually study two or even three of them um, and graduate with this specialization from the same university. So it's a lot of flexibility. Um, to give an example, our intern who we worked with last year, um, she was studying neuroscience and anthropology. So she had a double major in neuroscience and anthropology. So she could study those two subjects, both at a really high level at the same university at the same time. Um, we have top universities, research and professor support. So if you look at most rankings of top of like the top universities in the world, uh, many of them are located in the US. Uh, this is also usually based on research. Um, so a lot of top research is coming out of US universities. Uh, but at the same time, US universities really uh, put a big focus on the relationship between students and their professors. So um, you can visit your professors for office hours. Um, so you can meet with them, talk with them um, if you're having any problems with assignments or just with general things at the university. Um, and also with your thesis or your research, uh, you have a lot of support from your professors. Um, Students from all over the United States, so usually all 50 states um, and all over the world study at US universities. So it's a really diverse student population. Um, and this gives you a global community and career network for your future. So American universities are really focused also on helping you um, with what you will do in your future as well. Um, and in the US, there are over 4,000 universities. So there really is a school for every type of student. Um, and again, if that's something you are interested in, um, our office, we're happy to help you to find out which university could be the best fit for you. Um, so for some basics about uh, the levels of US higher education, um, I have this little diagram here. Um, so again, a big difference between the US and Czech Republic is that our 
a bachelor's degree is four years. So again, it's easy to remember, uh, our high school is four years and our bachelor's degree is also four years. Um, and there are two ways to get to this bachelor's degree level. So you can either study at a junior or community college or um, in a undergraduate program to get to this bachelor's degree. Um, next, we have you know, master's degree studies and PhD studies. We also have these professional schools. So this is another big difference between US and Czech Republic. Uh, that if you wanted to study medicine or law, you wouldn't study that yet in your bachelor's degree. You would study it afterwards. So um, for example, if you wanted to be a doctor, you would study your bachelor's degree in a general science, maybe like chemistry, and then you would go on to medical school after uh, you finished your bachelor's degree. Um, another really big difference is that for us, a bachelor's degree is the kind of finishing degree of um, your studies. So a lot of American students never get a master's degree. Um, and actually we are usually encouraged to work in between our bachelor's degree and our master's degree. And then it's possible to do a master's degree in a completely different field. So for example, for me, I did my bachelor's degree in sociology and public policy. But then after my bachelor's degree, I came to the Czech Republic. I was a Fulbright English teaching assistant. I really enjoyed teaching English. And then four years later, after I worked for four years, I did my master's degree in applied linguistics, which I didn't even know applied linguistics was a field of study in my bachelor's degree. So I completely changed uh, my career and my interests. Um, and in the US, that's really something even encouraged. They want you to have this practical experience when you uh, go for your master's degree, for example. Um, there are also different types of schools that you might hear about uh, with um, US higher education. And I've kind of mentioned them a little bit already. Um, we have universities, which offer both undergraduate and postgraduate or, you know, master's PhD studies. Um, but then we also have colleges, which only offer undergraduate degrees or bachelor's degrees. And these can typically be smaller. Um, but the word college can also mean one faculta within a larger university. So you might hear, uh, you know, University of Michigan College of Engineering. So it's the Faculta of Engineering within the larger university. But just to confuse you a little bit more, um, so uh, faculty, this word in English, usually means the staff of professors. So uh, that's, you know, not to be confused with Czech Faculta, which would mean the college or the department um, of the university. So just a little thing to watch out for there. Um, and then finally, we have this junior or community college option, um, which again is usually a two-year program. And then you can either finish with an associate's degree or you can continue to finish your bachelor's degree at a university or a college. Um, so these are the three types of schools in general. Um, but then these can either be public or private. Um, again, at the university level, um, these are equal in reputation in the US. Um, actually, a lot of the most famous uh, US universities are private. So Harvard University, uh, Georgetown, Yale, these are all private universities. Um, so while public universities have state funding, um, they can also have lower cost, but they can be more competitive for out of state or international students. Um, meanwhile, private universities have higher costs, but they can also give more scholarship funding. So it's a bit of a trade off there if you would be interested in studying in the US. Um, US universities 
also uh, have really big focus on campus life and the opportunities that the university can provide. So you're not just studying at the university, um, you're also living there and you're meeting other students through these campus opportunities. Um, in the US, we're really focused not just on your studies, but also on what you're doing outside of the classroom. So here's an example from a student, Sharka, who studied in the US, who talks about how um, this college club, uh, this chapter, it gave her all these other opportunities even outside of the classroom. Um, so at the US, in the US universities, some other things you might uh, be interested in are sports, uh, similar to what I talked about with the high school level. Um, and a lot of Czech students do study in the US with athletic scholarships, even Christina. Um, students are really uh, focused on research or can have the opportunity to get involved with research, even in their bachelor's degree. Um, there is Greek life, so these uh, campus social organizations that also do community service. You can see, try to find me in the pictures. Um, U.S. universities also have lots of facilities that are free for students, given the cost of the tuition, which I'm sure you've heard about, which I'll talk about later. Um, but these types of, uh, you know, fitness center, health center, um, even counseling center, career center, writing center. So all of these uh, different offices that are there to help you um, and to you know, make sure you're doing all right and support you during your studies. Um, and then as I mentioned, uh, you know, studying in the US, usually their campuses are super diverse, very global, um, and you have opportunity to meet students from all over the world. So now we'll do another Kahoot uh, for this university culture. So again, we will learn as we go. Um, and I will share the screen again so that you can join our new Kahoot. And now you are all Kahoot pros, I hope. So we have a new, a new pin. All right, starting to see all my animal friends popping up. All right, great. Thanks everybody for joining. I don't know if you're getting the same name as you did last time, so no. So you're gonna have to remember a new name. All right, so we have 38, 39. All right, let's get started. So this one is about US university culture. Okay, so here's a true American tradition. The activity when students and alumni barbecue and hang out outside before an American football game is called a pregame party, team barbecue, tailgate, or bumper buzz. All right, so it's actually called a tailgate. So something to remember. Oops. All right, now we have red snail in the lead. Um, if you need help finding an internship or with your resume, you should go to the career center, counseling center, academic advisor, or teaching assistant. So again, these are all the different types of uh, offices that can support students. All right, Career Center, great job. Okay, when do most college students have to decide their major by? 
So either the end of college, end of first year, end of second year, or end of third year. All right, so end of second year is right. So in year two. And again, two out of four years. So about halfway through. What type of school has both undergraduate and postgraduate degrees? University, college, junior college, or master's program? So university, great, great job. Red snail still in the lead. Which statement is false about junior community colleges? So this is a little more detail than we learned so far about community colleges. Okay, correct. They have lower academic standards. Community colleges have the same high quality of academic standards as other universities and colleges. Okay, homecoming. So this is something we didn't talk about, but homecoming is. So take a guess. Either when students move out, when students move in, a fall weekend with a football game, and when alumni visit, or an event only for alumni. So if you're brave, you can take a guess. Okay, so it's a fall weekend with a football game and when other, or other activities and when alumni visit. So my uh, university had a football game, we had a parade um, and lots of tailgating and barbecues when uh, it was homecoming weekend. Okay, what years are considered upperclassmen students? So again, thinking back to our names of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Okay, good job, guys. So uh, freshmen and sophomores would be lower classmen, and then juniors and seniors are upperclassmen. All right, red snail, staying in the lead. Which is not an essential part of the US college application process? That's what we're gonna talk about quickly next. So it's a good pre-guess. All right, good job. So there is no specific college entrance exam for US universities. Up, oh, snowy ostrich taking the lead. Okay, true or false? It is possible to work a campus job while attending college in the US. What do you think? Okay, true. You can, uh, even international students can work on campus all four years of their studies. And the last one is what are liberal arts colleges known for? So this is another tricky one, something we didn't talk about explicitly. Okay, so it's a well did education. So this idea of liberal arts in the US, uh, this idea that we not only study our one major or few, you know, two majors uh, or our specialization, but that we're getting a well-rounded education in lots of different subjects. So similar to the idea of gymnasium, um, but that we study 
um, not just our major or our specialization, but we also take other classes. Usually universities have a certain number of classes that you have to take in different fields in order to graduate. So again, even though I was a public policy and sociology major, I still had to take two science classes. So I took astronomy and psychology. So just an example of um, this idea of liberal arts college. All right, so we have our winners. Red Snail. Champion B. And eight of 10 is Snowy Ostrich. So good job, guys. Um, and again, good job. Uh, I know some of these were things that might have been new to you as well. All right, so I'll quickly go through the last slide so that way we at least have a few times a few minutes for questions. Um, but just as I mentioned with the application process, um, since we don't have college, college entrance exams, um, there are all of these other pieces of the application that um, you submit to universities. And the universities are looking to get to know you as a student, um, not or like you as a person, actually, not just you as a student. So um, these things like recommendation letters, you write an essay. So it's your a chance to show the university more about you than just what's on your uh, or your transcripts. Um, and the universities are looking to see whether you as a person would fit in with their campus community. Um, I know that you all probably have heard that US universities are super expensive, um, but here's just uh, to show you a way to think about the financing, if that is something that you've maybe considered. Um, but to study at US, US universities, the first uh, thing that you would want to look at is university scholarships or these university financial resources, then um, external resources. So in the Czech Republic, there are even different uh, scholarship foundations to help Czech students studying in the US. Um, and then finally, you have the options of your own personal finances and loans um, in order to all equal the actual cost of the university. And again, if this is something you're interested in, please contact our office and we're happy to help you. Um, but the, another big difference between uh, US and Czech uh, university admissions is the amount of time that it takes to apply to a U US university. Um, so this is just an example timeline if you wanted to start your studies next autumn, uh, so fall 2022, uh, the deadlines for US universities are already in November or February. So this is way before uh, Czech college or university entrance exams. Um, so that means already now in spring and summer 2021, you would already be uh, taking the tests I said uh, language tests are required for international students, but the other tests of general knowledge now are optional at many universities. Um, but then all those other parts of that list of application pieces, uh, you would need to be starting already over one year in advance from when you actually would want to start your studies. Um, so, Again, just to tell you a little bit about our advising center and how we could help if this is something you would be interested in, in studying in the US, um, all of our services are free. Um, we offer seminars and webinars like this one. Um, we also have webinars each month on different topics related to US universities. Um, we have a newsletter that we send out two times per month. Um, we have a library and lots of online materials. Um, and if you are not in Prague, that's also fine. Um, we have partner libraries in Ostrava, in Pilsen, and in Brno. So uh, there is a library uh, where you can learn more about US applications somewhere near you. Um, and then lastly, we offer one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation. So I'm happy to meet with you either online or hopefully one day in person uh, when it's possible again um, and to talk about your specific application plan. 
Um, and you can follow us on social media or contact uh, me at this advisor at fulbright.cz. All right, so that's all I had uh, planned and we have a bit of time for questions. Um, so please feel free to write anything in the chat box or you can also um, just unmute yourself and uh, say your question out loud as well. So I'll stop this so I can see um, the faces that are not uh, hidden and feel free to unmute your microphone to ask a question. Mariel, thank you so much. Before we will get more questions, I have one question myself. Could you uh, share a little bit more about the future careers of those people who study at liberal arts colleges? Where do they mm -hmm. usually head in terms of uh, their future career outlooks? Yeah, so um, of course, as I said, even if you study at a liberal arts college, you do choose your specialization or your major uh, within the first two years. So you do, of course, graduate with a specialization, um, but you're also having this opportunity to still take classes in things that you enjoy um, or things that you might be considering for your major as well. Um, and the philosophy of liberal arts education is that it's giving you this uh, foundation of critical thinking and analysis um, and also just, again, a general foundation in lots of different subjects that you can kind of uh, weave this knowledge together. So, um, you know, the belief is that in liberal arts uh, colleges, you can actually go on to do anything um, because you have these kind of foundational skills of critical thinking um, analysis and again, bringing these different fields together so um, that you are able to kind of bring different strategies from different um, specializations and fields in order to uh, do whatever career you might be interested in. So um, that you have these kind of basic skills also behind the deeper knowledge in a specific uh, career area. Um, Okay, I have the question. Did you study your master's in applied linguistics here or back in the USA? Actually, uh, none of the above. I studied uh, my master's in applied linguistics in the UK. So I have a bit of knowledge of the UK education system as well. I studied uh, at Oxford. So that was a really awesome opportunity. But again, as I said, like I would never have studied applied linguistics without having uh, worked and uh, been living in the Czech Republic. So um, that was really important for me that I uh, was able to have that life and work experience uh, in between my bachelor's studies and then when I went to do my master's studies. I see Tomas. Um, isn't it like that the colleges are so much expensive because maybe like in similar with the healthcare system that it's much expensive because of the admit administration? Like because as you said, there are like so many offices that maybe because of that, that it's so like high cost for the school, uh, et cetera. Yeah, exactly. So um, it's, you know, not just that you're paying for the actual classes, but you're paying for all of these other services and these other offices as well. So, um, and also for, you know, usually you're living on the campus, so you're paying for your housing to the school. Um, you have a meal plan, so you're paying for your meals to the school. So all of that creates this kind of upfront cost. Um, but, but, you know, all of this is included. So then when you're actually at the school, you have all of these things just available to you um, right away. So uh, rather than, you know, having a dormitory or having a 
an apartment or flat here in Czech Republic, um, or if you're paying for Menza or something like that, um, all of that would be paid at the front or at the beginning of your studies. Um, and then that way, when you are actually at the school, you don't have to worry about it because it's just already paid already. Um, so that's kind of the uh, logic behind why it's so expensive. Uh, Carolina, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, um, I just wanted to ask which school system, like between the Czech Republic, the UK, or the US, which was like most ideal for you? Um, that's a good question. I would say, um, I mean, I think that for me, I like the way that I kind of discovered each school system because um, in the US, I think it was great for my bachelor's degree because I had this flexibility of what I wanted to study. Um, for my personal example, when I was in my high school or my secondary school, I thought that I wanted to be in like fashion. I really liked clothes and fashion design. I thought, you know, maybe I want to work at a like a magazine like Vogue or something. And so um, I told my parents like, I wanna go to school and I wanna study fashion. And they kind of said like, maybe you wanna go to a liberal arts college and then you can decide later. Um, and they kind of made me realize that the reason I liked fashion is because I liked thinking about why people wear the things that they wear. Or I was always interested in, you know, why in 1970s did people wear certain clothes different than 1940s. Um, so they kind of like redirected me in this area of sociology. Um, and then I decided, okay, I want something more practical. So then I looked at public policy. So um, just an example of if like I had had my way, I would have probably gone to a school and studied fashion. And then my life would have been very different because I never would have uh, kind of rediscovered this other direction and then studied sociology and public policy. So I think the US system was really great for that because I had this flexibility to kind of uh, explore and decide. Um, but then I, you know, studying in the UK for my master's was great because again, it had this uh, specific program that I was now interested in and had my professional experience. And so I was able to, you know, more specialize um, in that system. Um, and then in Czech Republic, I have not actually been a student in the Czech Republic, but I've had the opportunity to teach both uh, secondary school and also um, at the university level. So um, that's been, you know, really just interesting to be able to compare the systems. Um, and also, you know, having many Czech friends who study at Czech universities, I can learn more about the student perspective too. Um, I see another question in the chat. Are the US university degrees comparable to the British ones? So yes, definitely. Um, I would say that like US and UK uh, bachelor's degrees, uh, master's degrees, you know, the quality is all very much the same. Um, in the UK, bachelor's degrees can be three years. So that's something else just in terms of the numbers of years um, that are a bit different, but yeah. Any more questions, anyone? It's 3 p.m., but in case there are any more pressing questions, we still have a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah, Stinka. Well, I, um, I heard uh, that quite a big problem after graduating from a kind of university. If it's so expensive and you take a loan, uh, sometimes it's a really uh, problem to pay back. Is it easy or how, if you know <laughs> how it is, taking a loan and paying back? Yeah, so I mean, of course, like the uh, ideal is that you should not have to take out a loan 
uh, for your studies. So um, in the US, we have a big problem with student debt and loans can be a really big problem for a lot of students. Um, with the Czech students that I work with, you know, I try my best and we work together to make it so that you wouldn't have to take out a loan um, and that you would have options where you wouldn't need to take out a loan. So um, if you remember my slide, you know, the first option is university scholarships. The second option is these kind of external scholarships, either from Czech foundations or other international foundations. And then the third option are either, you know, personal finances and then loans. So loans should be the last option. Um, and the way that we uh, work with students is to help you find, um, again, out of those 4,000 universities, the ones that are the best fit for you, both according to academics, again, this campus culture and your personality, um, and then also the finances. So um, that, you know, not all universities are so expensive. Um, there are cheaper options, and then there are options where you have a higher chance of getting the scholarship that you need um, so that you wouldn't need to take out a loan. So um, yes, like many students, especially American students, do take out loans. Um, I know some Czech students who also have taken out loans, but um, there are ideally other ways that you would not have to take out a loan and still have this opportunity of studying in the U.S. That was an excellent question, mm -hmm. and I don't see any uh, other raised hands and nothing in the chat. So thank you very much to everyone to, for participating in today's lesson. Thank you to Marielle, who joined us uh, very early in the morning from New Jersey. And um, I hope that all of you know where you will find Marielle and additional contact information on our website. Um, in case you would like to um, pursue um, international study opportunities in the United States. Um, please, before you leave, uh, try to open this feedback form so that we know how you enjoyed the lesson today and how we can improve the lessons that we plan until the end of the school year. And um, just a kind reminder that the following life lesson will focus on current issues in the United States. And um, the presenter will also focus on one thing that Marielle already um, touched a little bit. She will explain to the audience in Czech Republic the difference between the uh, federal and the state perspective. So we talked about the fact that funding that, that state exams, for example, differ um, in this way as well. So uh, please stay tuned to our channels and we look forward to seeing many of you in our future lessons. Yeah, thank you all. Um, and I also just added in the chat that if you wanna try the Kahoot quizzes again, they're on our website. So you can uh, go through again. And also for teachers, you could use them in your lessons as well.